Okay, so yet another Schumacher XP2260W power center in for repair. And this one here does not have the usual problem. So I'm going to use a one that I've already fixed to show you what's wrong with it. Now, pushing this button shows you the percentage of battery charge. Here's the one that's just in. So the battery is good. They both, both of these units charge up to 100%. Now, when you turn on this switch, the battery voltage is indicated. Power will be supplied to the jump start cables. And power is also supplied to the USB jack. So I'll plug this in. And we can see that 5 volts is supplied to the jack. We're not drawing any juice, it's just a little voltmeter. So that's what we should see when this switch is turned on. Now let's try this, this unit here. First thing we see is battery condition is not indicated and the voltmeter shows no power at the USB jack. Everything else on this unit seems to work. The light works, the inverter works, the air compressor works. These sockets all work. Everything works, but not this. Can we fix it? Let's find out. Well, one of the problems we're going to have is that the screws are all wrong on this. Now, I know from experience that there are three different size screws in this device. We have all the screws out and it's not good. It's screwed up. Now, the two shortest screws are in the handle here, and that would be those two. I've separated them. Then we have a medium-sized screw. The medium-sized screws go right here. Here and here. And also, the medium-sized screws hold the battery door. So there should be eight of those. Two here, six in the battery door. And we only have five total. There's only five total of the right screw. The rest of the screws are all supposed to look like this. These would be the longer cut screws. There's only four original screws here. All the rest look like somebody has replaced these before. There was no rhyme or reason to how they were installed. And so that widens the screw sockets. They don't go back in correctly. It's difficult to remove. Not a good thing. Next, we have to take out the battery. That would usually be an eight millimeter. Probably gonna need two on this one. All right, so we're gonna get this battery out. And we'll come right back. Now we can test the switch. That. So you take out those wires with an eight millimeter socket. Here I'm connecting a multimeter. It shows over range or open circuit right now. When we touch the probes together, we get a beep. And it shows zero ohms. So that's what we should get when we turn the switch on. So we've got our probes across the switch now. I'm going to reach underneath and turn it on. No beep and the meter still shows over range. All right, let's get it out of there and see what's going on. Okay, here's a better view of the situation. I've got the switch out. Now if I touch my probes together, we get, get a beep. So we're on the switch. This would be the off position. we we'll turn it on. No beep. Or maybe just the opposite. Maybe that's the off position. This is the on position. No beep. No meter movement in either direction. So we definitely have an open switch. Now we can try taking it apart and see what we find inside. So, just four screws that took this apart. It looks like all we have here is a spring that pushes these contacts together. So when you turn this, you...
This is just spring loaded. All right, so let's see if we can figure out why this spring mechanism is not working. What exactly is going on here that is it just corrosion on this pad? That seems hard to believe, but okay, so we're going to clean this up, see if we can't figure out why those contacts are not pressing against the lower the lower contacts. So, so far I've noticed two things. It's wet. You can see some moisture in here, like it's been left out in the rain. Well, that might have happened at the dump. But the other thing I notice, if you look at these two copper contacts, there's mold flash here on the top. So right here, this copper, there's plastic mold flash. And there's also some mold flash here. And I'm wondering if if the top contact is writing on that mold flash and not depressing. It looks like it at one time it was depressing. But so uh, we're going to take use a razor knife to cut this out of here. We'll clean that up and we'll put it back together and see if we get some continuity. So on closer examination. What I believe happened is I believe that this melted. If you look at the position of this copper contact and compare it to this one, you can see here before I make this all nice, how much material I had to scrape off from here and here. Initially, I thought this might have been mold flesh, but I believe, and you can, I don't know if the, I can show it to you here. This actually melted down into the plastic here. So, so this is lower than that one. And all the melted plastic was riding on top. I believe that's what was stopping the top of the switch from making contact. So this, this wasn't going all the way down because it was riding on plastic. And you could even see some plastic that had melted and stuck to these contacts. It does work now just by putting it together and forcing it. I can get a continuity here. So we'll see what happens. We'll clean it up a little bit better, put it back together, see how reliably we can make it work. Okay, we have it all back together, just these four screws here. So we'll put our meter on it and see if it's any better. Okay, it's open right now. We'll switch it on. Oh, showing zero ohms. Try again. Open. Comes right on. Open. Comes right on. Call that a win. Okay, she's back in now. Probably wise to make another test. Okay, we're good to this point. Well, we've got it all back together. Let's see if it works. I've only got the case attached with a couple of screws. And the battery is outboard over here. Because these are so difficult to put back together, we want to make sure that we got it all. Now, I've recharged the battery. It's up to 98%. It was up to 100% yesterday. And we do have a display now indicating that the battery is up to 12.8 volts. Unfortunately, what we don't have is any power here. The USB is dead. Put in a test light, might be easier to prove with the test light. 
See, this does not turn on. So, now we have some clue as to how this switch melted. These, this USB port is only good for half an amp. It would be 5 volts, 500 milliamps. It would seem that somebody tried to draw a lot more current from here, and that's what caused the switch to melt. Now we have a dilemma. Long experience has taught me that sometimes it's best to leave well enough alone. Everything else works on this right now. And if this were going back to the original owner, he might be inclined to try again and melt the switch again and blow up whatever else is blown up in here again. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to pursue it in that case, because you can buy these, they're so cheap. You can get these, it'll deliver 1 or 2 amps at 5 volts at 12 so volt sockets work. We can plug this in. Let's put this test light in it now. See, and the test light lights up. So we can restore full functionality for just a couple of dollars with one of these. And it's going to be a lot more effort to pursue the problem. So that's what I decided to do. Big selection to choose from, all colors, and another Schumacher XP2260W back in service. Thanks for watching.